Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to this quick overview about a pretty new application that probably will end up helping us a lot during our daily workflow. So today we're gonna talk about Craft. And if you don't know Craft, you probably don't know InVision. And if you don't know InVision, I really strongly suggest you check it out. Basically, InVision is a tool. It's an online tool for fast prototyping and workflow collaboration. It's completely online. It's not a software that you can install or configure in your machine. So it works pretty much on every operating system and it works on every browser. It's pretty impressive. Uh, the pricing it's quite high if you want to use it professionally every day but if you want to start playing around with it they have a free plan that you can use to create one prototype and it's pretty great but I'm not here to talk about InVision anyway I really strongly suggest you to check it. You can create fast prototyping and interaction and use it to have a conversation with your team or your clients and it's it's pretty awesome, so just check it. But today I don't want to talk about InVision. I want to talk about Craft. Craft is a product of InVision. They release this application that you can install in your operating system and can create a new panel, new extensions in Sketch or Photoshop. So if we open my Sketch here on the side, you will notice that I have this new panel that by default Sketch doesn't have. That is the panel that Craft generates for you. So Craft is this application that lives on your bar or your notification system if you're on Windows and can give you the ability to activate some specific new options to the software, in my case Sketch, that the software doesn't have by default. And you have of course the option to activate it for Sketch or Photoshop. I don't have Photoshop installed so I cannot have it for Photoshop. But uh, one super cool thing happened last week. I got an early invite to test the prototype beta of Craft. And the prototype beta is something really cool that can help you a lot. So first of all, let's take a look on how a craft works and why it's helpful, it can be helpful during our daily workflow. So for example, I have this really quick and really easy example that I created. And this is a pretty standard situation when you're creating a mobile app or you're uh, maybe developing a mobile website where you have to take care of different screens and transitions and uh, have having different interactions for the user. So if for example here in my artboard, let's move it here to have more space and more clarity, I have my artboard called home and I have this huge list that in my case are just six but it's fine, it can be really huge, huge list of names and description and something something and instead of having or like I did in my case, I mean just lorem ipsum that doesn't really make sense or manually accessing one by one and writing like Alex and last name and then having this one is like Luke last name and something like that. After a while we can like, I, I don't really know what name it's legit or what name it's fake. I have also a typo here. So, and it's also pretty boring. It's really time consuming. But when you have a screen like that, that you have to present to a client, you should always have at least fake real content. So to simulate the content that you will have in the application to see if it actually works or it's gonna destroy your style. So in order to avoid this, we can use Craft, the auto filling option of Craft and it's quite good. So for example, if I select all the names and I, I know that here I wanna have just names, so I select all these first text here. I will open craft here for the text option or the type options and I can activate the samples and I want the samples to have names. Here I have the option if I can select male names, female names or both, I will say click just both and look what happened here. 
automatically the system fill the inputs that I selected it with fake names, with a random array of fake names that are totally legit. Like you could have a friend that it's called Isabel Bush. It's a pretty common name, I think. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's great. With just a click, we fill every space. And if we're not happy with this name, we can click again and the system will randomize again another time or as many times as we want until we have like the right balance that we want. And also here, if you notice, we have different options for different fields. In this case, for now, we have the most common fields that you will most likely have when, you, uh, when you're creating um, an application. So for example, here, if I want this to be the name of the CD, uh, I don't know what kind of list this could be, let's say, name of the city. It's randomly adding cities from all over the world, I think from the US. So this does look US, but anyway, or we can have country. Maybe country is better. Yes, country makes more sense. And here we can do the same with the text. And as you can see, every time I add something like, for example, headline technology, just stuff like that. Just pretty random stuff. And I can resize everything and everything fits here. So this content doesn't make sense at all for this type of application, whatever I'm coding, but at least it's real content. It's fake content, but it looks real because it's not lorem ipsum and it's not something that we have to manually write. And you notice how fast I achieved this, like a legit screen of all my settings and all my uh, content by just a couple of simple clicks and craft you can totally use it in this way with both sketch and photoshop so and it's totally free you just sign up with your email you download it it's totally free and this is great you have the same options also for images you can select a container and apply random images you can reorder your library you can duplicate or create order a list and it's pretty great but the thing that i want to focus today for this review are not the standard default option of crap but it's something that is not available yet and I got an early access as a beta tester and is the prototype section. So let's say that we have these three screen, the first home page, then the view message and then the write message. I have to show the client that if I tap on this name, this view message is gonna slide from the right to the left and it's gonna replace the screen. Then I have to show the client that if I tap the message here, this keyboard is gonna appear and I'm gonna have the empty screen to write my message or whatever I want. How do I do that? Normally I should manually code this stuff, like create a fake HTML section and code the prototype and see and show the client this prototype on a web page. But first, it takes a lot of time, and most of the time, the client doesn't really understand if this prototype it's on a web page. This is supposed to be supposed to be on a, a phone, on for example, in this case, an iPhone. So. If we don't show these on an iPhone, most likely the client will cannot properly understand. And also coding all this stuff and make it look good because it has to look good. It has to look exactly the same as the design. It's really complicated. It's not easy to achieve this perfection and it's really like slick look and everything has to work properly with all the animation. We cannot spend that much time on an early stage of prototyping for a for the client, for something that probably the client could say, no, I don't really like it, I should just change it. So we don't want to spend that time. The solution comes with prototype. Prototype works, unfortunately, just with iPhone and Sketch. Hopefully they will extend craft and prototype also for Android phone, because that would be really a cool and neat thing. For now it works only so with iPhones, but let's check it out anyway. So let's create a new prototype. We have to create a new prototype. Uh, well, I'm going to call it Alicat uh, iOS test. 
and then we have to select the initial screen and in my case I want to start when you open the prototype is the initial screen has to be home and I can create the prototype. Now I converted this sketch into a prototype and we have more options that are hidden but we can access pretty quickly. So first of all I want to declare that this is a fixed a header because if I scroll down this section should scroll underneath and if I do this with the image it's gonna scroll entirely I don't want that I want the header to be fixed so let's select the header and specify fixed header perfect we have a fixed header and of course if we select something else the tool the prototype tool recognize that we select another element so if we reselect the header we'll recognize that we have the option of a fixed header the second thing that i want to do i want to select also this thing and had fixed header and then this i want to have it a fixed footer so even if i scroll this stuff the top header and footer should remain fixed. Now I want to create the interaction that if I tap this option this entire screen this entire artboard will slide in from right to left. To do that I have to select this section and in my case is the message one it's selected I can simply press C like he's suggesting here so I press C on my keyboard and I have this dynamic handle that I can connect to a specific artboard. In my case I want to select the message artboard. And here I have the pop-up to manage the interaction and what action this interaction has to activate. I can pretty much use whatever gesture I want to tap because it's the default, not tap and hold, but I can use swipe, whatever. Tap. And then if I want the behavior, I want to link to this artboard. I don't want to go back, this miss a model. Or I can also open default application of the iPhone. It's freaking great. But link to an artboard by default. And I want to animate the introduction of this new artboard from the right. So it's going to swipe from the right. And click add link. That's it. We have this first step of prototype. In order to use the prototype, we have to use the iPhone. You will notice here on my home screen, I have an app called Envision app that I downloaded for free on the uh, App Store. Let's tap on it and it's directly connected to my Envision account and it's connected of course to the Craft account that it's pretty much the same. Here is the first screen as you can see it's pretty empty I used already a uh, prototype before but if we want to access to this new prototype first we can go on the screen and if we open the screen here we're gonna notice that the preview while before was saying that no device was connected now we have the iPhone 2 that is this current iPhone that I'm using and it's connected so craft recognize that I have the iPhone connected to the screen to be connected I have to stay or on the same Wi-Fi or connected with a cable so if we swipe left we're gonna have the list of available prototypes and in my case I have this one is Alicad iOS test if I tap on it I will start immediately from the home page that is the first screen that I declare to be to start my prototype. If I tap somewhere you will notice that this section gets highlighted because it's the only interactive section of my prototype. If I scroll you see we have the fixed header how we decided how we um, specified in the prototype and if I tap on the section did you see what happened? I have the swipe from the right of the message section and if I tap somewhere I cannot go back but if I swipe left it recognized the back option so if I tap here nothing happened this section is fixed and it's working if I tap message back doesn't work if I tap details just to show you that this is not a real app is my prototype so nothing else works just the swipe left. If for example I want to tap this and I want to implement the message to if I tap on the message or the arrow I want to go back to my previous screen I can easily do it by just simply reaccessing my sketch I select the message here and if I open the prototype I can select C again 
select the previous artboard and instead of having any link to the artboard I want to just select a link back if I select the link back I don't need to have any animation because it's gonna create it's gonna use the same animation that we used to access the artboard and revert it back so let's add the link if we go back on our iPhone we have to restart so go to the start screen if we tap it here we're gonna open this if we tap a message we're going back so tap again tap a message back to the previous screen tap again tap a message back to the previous screen and how long did it take us to create this prototype just the simple tap open with a slide and slide back to revert to the previous artboard it took us two minutes how long would it taken us to create this coded properly on uh, whatever platform uh, like a lot like at least two days because it's not it's not easy especially to create these bands and things so now here you can see there's a small bug that we don't have the fixed footer even if I specify the fixed footer here is not working let's see if we can fix it this is still in beta so I'm it's pretty obvious that this section has some bugs so if we clear the component here yes i clear the component and in my prototype now it's working this but i cannot have the fixed footer so this is a section that probably doesn't work yet but let's add the tab that i said before so if i tap on this i want to open the next screen with a different animation different transition so if we select the footer and we hold C automatically we're gonna have the handle let's tap this I wanna have instead of tap I wanna have the swipe up link to this artboard and I wanna have uh, from the bottom yes I wanna swipe up from the bottom and add link perfect let's try again let's go back here First screen let's tap on this access the second screen swipe up ah it's working <laughs> if I swipe down no it's not working because I don't have anything connected so let's connect this cancel to go back and we're pretty much done so as you can see here if I edit stuff on the fly for example here I'm gonna tap C again connect to the previous artboard and let's just link back without specify anything else automatically this section if we go back to the previous section go to start screen so we have the first section let's open this perfect swipe sweet cancel mm, cancel okay it's working uh, I don't know if it's me that I cannot tap properly or there's a there's a small yeah there's a small as you can see if I tap here it doesn't recognize if I tap not really on the cancel it works so there's a small delay there's a small like shifting in the actual section see I'm tapping probably I'm tapping on the bar on the nav bar and not the cancel button but yeah this is hmm cannot find the screen oh look at that there's a bug so as I said this is in beta still but did you notice what happened now did you notice what in two minutes we created this super quick prototype that it's fully functional and can give the client and us as developers this quick option to create a super quick prototype with like some pre-built really simple transition to show on the client on a real device in real time and show them look that's what I am thinking do you like this transition do you like these interactions and if the client say yes we can totally keep coding it and actually creating it up but if the client say no we just spend two minutes instead of two days to prototype these and have the confirmation of going on or just canceling whatever we're doing so it's pretty much it for this quick overview about craft from InVision. As I said, unfortunately, it's still in beta. It's available only for Sketch and it prototypes the app to uh, see the prototypes works only on iOS. But I really hope that InVision will grow strongly and will implement more stuff, especially for Android or for Photoshop. I, I'm really curious to see Photoshop the prototype section on Photoshop even if I think with Adobe experience design we won't see that 
pretty soon because it's a sort of competition. I don't think Adobe would be really happy about this, but I'm really hopeful. And as I said, both things are free. So even if you don't have Sketch, but you have Photoshop, you can totally sign up to InVision, try it for free, create some free prototypes. InVision, you have basically the same options of craft that you saw to quick prototype with quick interaction, but everything is online. Just give it a try, it's completely free. And if you don't like it, you can cancel your account, but good thing it works also with Photoshop. So let me know if you like this tool, let me know if you try it, if you downloaded it and if you experimented with it and let me know what your suggestions are. This product is still in beta so we should really, if we like it, we should really push the feedback button a lot and send a lot of feedback to InVision and push them to make it better, to create more stuff and it's completely free. It's a free plugin that most likely will improve a lot our daily workflow. Thank you so much guys for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.